How's it going everybody? Too spooky here. For those of you who never heard of the whole iceberg thing, it's basically a trend where you take a specific topic or genre and go through different tiers of information about it. Each tier getting progressively more obscure or dark with the information available. Something I'm pretty passionate about is of course anime and manga, but outside of that, I also happen to be a massive fan of horror movies. So naturally, I'm also very passionate about anime and manga that fall under the horror genre. But the thing is, I barely ever see anyone talking about horror anime or manga. Like, at all. You might find a video here or there talking about stories by Junji Ito or Shuzo Ushimi, but that's about it. So through a lack of conversation and overall ignorance on the matter, I got curious and started digging. What are all the different horror anime and manga out there? And how far does this apparent niche really go? Well today, I finally have the answer. I present to you, the horror anime and manga iceberg. Before we dive into each respective tier, I figured the first thing we should do is figure out what exactly is considered horror. By definition, horror is classified as an intense feeling of fear, shock, or disgust. That definition by itself would be enough to pave the way for this iceberg. But the thing is, a lot of the anime and manga I came across are not exclusively in the horror genre. What I mean by this is that most of the anime and manga that would be considered horror are primarily rooted in a wide variety of other genres, but still contain some or many horror elements. This is why I think horror anime and manga as a whole isn't discussed too often, because most of the time it's classified within some other genre. Even if said story contains a good deal of horror elements to really make you question what genre it should be defined as. So simply put, a great deal of these stories are not exclusively horror. But if there are at least a couple strong horror elements involved in said story, I'm including it in the iceberg. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I've found every horror anime and manga out there. In fact, I'm betting this is far from it. But I've discovered quite a few, and have organized them into different respective tiers. My main goal with this video was to personally explore everything the horror genre has to offer within anime and manga. Therefore, a lot of these stories I've yet to experience myself. So I can only give the most basic description of what they're about, otherwise we'd be here for a very long time. In fact, the best way to give you the basic premise of what to expect from these manga will come from the official descriptions provided about their contents. So I'll mostly be going off those descriptions unless we're talking about an author who has created multiple horror series. But hopefully through this, you'll also find some new, exciting, and most of all terrifying new stories to read or watch. And as one final word of warning, I'm going to mispronounce a lot of these series names, so just cut me a little slack, okay? I'm trying my best. Now without further ado, let's jump into the first tier. Junji Ito. What better place to start than with the king of horror manga himself, Junji Ito. Junji Ito has been writing horror manga since 1984, having his talents recognized in 1987 with what would later become one of his most popular serializations, Tomie. Since then, his stories have broken heavily into the mainstream, and his name is without a doubt one you'll immediately think of when it comes to horror manga. Although many of his stories are certainly not for the faint of heart, and are all created solely with the intention of being horror, I placed him in the first tier due to his mainstream popularity making him the poster child for the genre. For recommendations of Junji Ito's works, I personally recommend Uzumaki, Tomie, and any of his short story collections, my personal favorite of his short stories being The Hanging Balloons. But when it comes to the king of horror manga, there is really no bad place to begin. Shuzo Ushimi Shuzo Ushimi would debut on the manga scene in 2001, and would end up making a name for himself through series like Drifting Net Cafe and The Flowers of Evil a few years later. While Ushimi's various works aren't your standard definition of horror, and many of his stories have little to do with it, some of his later works like Happiness and Blood on the Tracks introduced many more horror elements and ultimately placed him further into the mainstream than he already was. These specific horror elements usually focus more on placing his characters into extremely uncomfortable or disturbing situations, leading to a much different aspect of horror manga not seen with many of his peers. If you're looking for the most horrific and uncomfortable of his works to date, check out Blood on the Tracks. Attack on Titan Over a century ago, mankind was devoured by giant beings of unknown intelligence and origin known as Titans. Creatures that eat humans alive indiscriminately and for no apparent reason. 
The remaining population has managed to survive the last hundred years only by building a multi-walled city capable of keeping the Titans at bay. Training military recruits to patrol the perimeter and gather intelligence about their mysterious foe. Eren and Mikasa have lived a relatively peaceful life behind the city's walls, but when a massive titan appears, smashing the outer barrier and unleashing a wave of terror, their lives are brutally changed forever. Chainsaw Man Denji's a poor boy who will do anything for money, even hunting down devils with his pet devil dog, Puchita. He's a simple man with simple dreams, drowning under a mountain of debt. But his sad life gets turned upside down one day when he's betrayed by someone he trusts. Now with the power of a devil inside him, Denji's become a whole new man. Chainsaw Man. The Promised Neverland. Emma, Norman, Ray, and many other siblings live at an isolated orphanage cut off from the outside world. They live a charmed life surrounded by friends and watched over by Mama, their caretaker until they leave the house for a foster family by the age of 12. The only rule is that they must never venture outside of the gate that isolates them from the rest of society, for dangers await. But one day, the children learn the true horror of what's in store for their short lives. Also, read the manga, don't watch the anime. Demon Slayer the setting is Taisho-era Japan. Tanjiro is a kind-hearted young boy who lived peacefully with his family as a coal seller. Their normal life changes completely when his family is slaughtered by demons. The only other survivor, Tanjiro's younger sister Nezuko, has become a ferocious demon. In order to return Nezuko to normal and get revenge on the demon that killed their family, the two of them depart on a journey. High School of the Dead when the infected approach Rei and Takashi's school, it led to a gruesome bloodbath that left the majority of students and staff dead or turned into the zombie-like monsters that have spread throughout the world. Together with a handful of other survivors, Rei and Takashi set forth to find their families in a world that is rapidly deteriorating. Governments have collapsed, the killer disease is out of control, and people everywhere are trying their best to simply live through each day. Jujutsu Kaisen Although Yuji Itadori looks like your average teenager, his immense physical strength is something to behold. Every sports club wants him to join, but Itadori would rather hang out with the school outcasts in the Occult Research Club. One day, the club manages to get their hands on a sealed cursed object. Little do they know the terror they'll unleash when they break the seal. Tokyo Ghoul Shy Ken Kaneki is thrilled to go on a date with the beautiful Rize, but it turns out she's only interested in his body. Eating it, that is. When a morally questionable rescue transforms him into the first half-human, half-ghoul hybrid, Ken is drawn into the dark and violent world of ghouls, which exists alongside our own. Helsing. For centuries, vampires have lurked in the shadows of England's streets. The Helsing organization, currently led by Integra Helsing, has spent centuries fighting these monsters and keeping their existence a secret from the world. Alucard is a vampire sworn to serve Integra and follow Helsing under her rule. Sarahs is a fledgling vampire subservient to Alucard, learning about vampire ways while struggling with her own lost mortality. Together they keep England safe from blood-drinking monsters, until a new breed of pseudo-vampire, the Freak, begins attacking people for fun and not to feed. Where are these freaks coming from and what will Helsing sacrifice to stop them? Parasite. In secret, Alien parasites drift downward towards Earth. Their directive? To take control of a human body and thrive in secret. When a parasite attempts to take over Shinichi, an ordinary high school student, he stops it in his arm to save his mind. With the strange power of amorphous muscle, the curious parasite strikes an uneasy truce with Shinichi. It will keep him alive and strong so that it may continue living, and will help protect him from the other parasites that might not take kindly to Shinichi's mind still actively working. Can Shinichi gain the courage to face the parasites and protect humanity? And would it even make a difference if he did? Soul Eater in a bizarre fantasy world, students known as Meisters are trained at the illustrious Shinigami Weapon Meister University, but the tools they wield are no ordinary weapons. Each Meister is paired with a human-like being who can transform into a weapon at will. And after defeating a pre a human whose soul has darkened, the weapon eats the soul within it. A Meister's ultimate goal is to collect 99 pre kishin souls and one of a witch so that his or her partner will become an all-powerful death scythe. 
Maka and her partner Soul Eater, Assassin Blackstar and his partner Demon Blade Tsubaki, and Shinigami's son Death the Kid and his partners the Demon Twin Pistol Thompson sisters, each vie for their ultimate goal, but plenty of challenges and adventures lie in their way. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure when Jonathan Joestar was just a baby, his mother tragically died in a carriage accident, and his father George was saved by the kindness of a stranger, Dario Brando. At least, that's what George believed. Unbeknownst to him that Dario was just attempting to steal from the victims. Thus, when Dario later dies and his son, Dio, comes to his doorstep, the wealthy George eagerly adopts the boy. But what should have become a budding friendship between two siblings quickly becomes a nightmare for poor Jonathan, as Dio is cruel, calculating, and will go to great lengths to become George's primary heir. Little does Jonathan know that this unfortunate childhood is only the harbinger of things to come, and this series of bizarre events only continues for generations to come. Future Diary Yuki is a disaffected middle school boy who has no dreams or goals in life. In fact, the only thing he has is his diary, writing down everything he observes and documenting every thought. The young boy uses it as an outlet for his imagination. One morning, however, Yuki wakes up to find his cell phone filled with diary entries for the next 90 days. Thinking nothing of it, he continues his morning until he begins to realize that everything on his phone is rapidly coming to pass. And it isn't just mere coincidence. Now Yuki suddenly finds himself thrust into a survival game against other future diary owners to become the new Lord of Time. Rosario Vampire 15-year-old Skune Aono is average in every way. He has no hobbies, less than stellar grades, and he's even flunked his high school entrance exam. His parents have managed to enroll him in a school, but it's no ordinary school. Skune will be attending Yuokai Academy, a place where monsters learn how to coexist with humans, as the werewolves, vampires, witches, and other monsters are required to retain their human forms. Skune, the lone human, is able to avoid their bloodthirsty gazes. However, he quickly attracts the attention of a number of devilish beauties including the vampire Mocha, a busty succubus, and even a young witch. It seems Skune's average life isn't so average anymore. Death Note Have you ever felt like the world would be a better place if certain people weren't around? Such grim daydreams might occur when watching the dismal daily news, but on one fateful day, Light Yagami finds that these daydreams can become reality. By pure happenstance, he comes across a black notebook entitled Death Note whose text within states that whoever's name is written on its pages will die. With the aid of the death god Ryuk, Light takes it upon himself to rid the world of its corruption, ushering in a new era of purity, one death at a time. But as Ryuk foretells, Light's actions will not go unchallenged. Bleach 15-year-old Ichigo Kurosaki is a typical teen with fighting skills, two caring sisters, and a special trait. He can see ghosts. However, when Ichigo and his family find themselves under attack by a huge beast, Ichigo discovers that there's more to the supernatural world than the everyday specter. Vengeful spirits known as Hollows roam the world in search of devouring souls, and Shinigami, the Soul Reapers, work tirelessly to defeat them and guide normal ghosts into a place called Soul Society. Ichigo valiantly fights the Hollow that threatens his sisters, but on the verge of defeat, a Shinigami named Rukia gives him her powers, turning him into a Shinigami himself. Ichigo must now adjust to his new life of both vanquishing and saving souls for the sake of soul society. Claymore In times of old, humans live in constant fear of demons known as Yoma. These vicious creatures can take the appearance and memories of humans they have devoured, thus blending into society as they freely feast on human flesh. The key to stopping the Yoma lies with the tolerated yet feared Claymores, women who are half-demon, half-human, and fully fated to become the demons that they hunt. Meanwhile, in a village, the young Rocky has been banished. His only crime was losing his family to the Yoma. Rocky is drawn to a Claymore named Claire, and together their journey begins. While Claire fights the Yoma plaguing the land, can Rocky help her in her struggle to retain her humanity? Berserk Born beneath the gallows tree from which his dead mother hung, Guts has always existed on the boundary between life and death. After enduring a terrible childhood, he spent his adulthood in brutal combat. 
pitting his strength against others in order to build his own. Life is simple enough for Guts until he meets Griffith, the inspirational, ambitious, and beautiful leader of the mercenaries, the Band of the Hawk. When Guts loses to Griffith in a duel, he is forced to join the Band of the Hawk, and, despite himself, finds a sense of camaraderie and belonging amongst them. However, as Griffith leads his soldiers from victory to victory, the bloody wars and underhanded politics reveal a side of him that nobody quite expected. Very soon, what seems like a straightforward march for conquest becomes a harrowing struggle for humanity and life itself. Can Guts, a simple warrior, defend those who have come to mean the most to him, all the while struggling not to lose to the darkness he has carried with him his entire life? Hey, Too Spooky cutting in here real quick for the sponsor for today's video, which is the Too Spooky Christmas Sweater for 2021. Need something extra festive this holiday season? Something absolutely exquisite on the body? Well then look no further because this thing is guaranteed to get you a high five this holiday season, or any holiday season for that matter. It's only available until March, and then it's going away forever, so please get yourself one of these before it is too late. Click the card in the top right hand corner of the screen to pick one up, otherwise there is a link in the description. Do not sleep on it. Like I said, available until March and then they're gone forever. But look at this beauty. You need it. Buy it. Now. And also, while I have your attention, be sure to follow me on Twitch at 2 Spookster. We're very active over on Twitch right now, doing a lot of streams, a lot of shenanigans. Come say hello, come bully me, whatever it may. Just go follow me there, please. Alright, back to the video. Thank you, guys. Kazuo Umezu Kazuo Umezu, otherwise known as the godfather of horror manga, began his craft all the way back in high school, and directly after graduating he began developing and publishing his enormous bibliography of horror manga, spanning from 1962 to 1990. Over time his works have inspired numerous other mangaka, and it's no exaggeration to say that horror manga as we know it would not exist without him. If you're looking for somewhere to start in his catalog, his most popular works are without a doubt Cat-Eyed Boy, Orochi Blood, and The Drifting Classroom. Go Nagai Go Nagai is a pioneer of the manga industry as we know it, beginning his career all the way back in 1967 and becoming one of the most popular mangakas of the 1970s, known for his pivotal series within the science fiction, erotica, fantasy, and of course, horror genres. His most popular horror works being Devilman, Violence Jack, and Demon Lord Dante. Though when it comes to this powerhouse within the industry, there are endless series to check out and explore. Hiroya Oku Hiroya Oku rose to popularity within the manga scene with his romantic comedy series Hen, which was serialized from 1988 to 1997. But a few years later, in the year 2000, he would release one of the most pivotal science fiction horror thriller series in manga, Gantz. And he continued this new line of horrific, psychological, and taboo themes with his later series Inuyashiki and Gigant. While not as accessible to the average manga reader due to graphic body horror, intense themes, and also sexual violence, Hiroya Oku has left a lasting impact on modern manga and influenced numerous series with his work. Q Hayashida Kyu Hayashida would make her debut on the manga scene in the year 2000 with a manga adaptation of the video game Machin X. While releasing that, she would then begin a phenomenal horror comedy series that would become relatively well known in the years to come, Doro Hidoro. After concluding Doro Hidoro in 2018, she would begin another horror comedy series in 2019 called Die Dark, that is still ongoing. Yoshiki Tonogai Yoshiki Tonogai would initially become known as the illustrator for the Higurashi When They Cry manga adaptations, but would later become well known for his three-part horror series, Doubt, Judge, and Secret. To give an idea of what to expect from these three series, here's the synopsis of Doubt. Rabbit Doubt is a popular new mystery game in which a wolf kills off each of a group of rabbits one by one. If the rabbits determine the identity of the wolf, they win the game. But if they suspect the wrong individual, the rabbits all die. Eiji, Rei, Mitsuki, Haruka, Yu, and Hajime are six friends who are meeting for the first time at a karaoke bar. But then, while separated, they lose consciousness and came to in a mysterious building, one of their bodies impaled on the wall. A real-life game of rabbit doubt has begun. With paranoia and suspicion abounding, the survivors struggle to piece clues together before the wolf picks them off one by one. Mieriko-chan 
One day, Miko suddenly started seeing grotesque beings that others couldn't. Her response was not to run, not to face them, but to do everything she could to completely ignore them. Can she keep a straight face and continue her day-to-day -day life while surrounded by horrifying monsters? You'll have to read to find out. Wicked City In the near future, the human world exists parallel to a world of demons and dark magic. The two have long abided by an uneasy peace treaty, but its time is almost up and a new one has to be negotiated. Now, two agents, a top human agent and a beautiful assassin from the other world, must protect the only man who can seal the treaty from Dark World renegades or die trying. Demon City Shinjuku Years ago, a great, unholy rift opened in the center of Tokyo, turning Shinjuku into a demon-infested slum. At the time, a great warrior fought their leader, but was defeated. Now, the unholy forces reach out, targeting the one man who can bring peace to the war-torn world. A young boy must now do what his father could not. Defeat the evil that lives inside Demon City Shinjuku. Beastars. One night at Cherryton Academy, an herbivore student is brutally murdered. Among the members of the drama club, the herbivore's suspicions naturally turn to their carnivore classmates. The prime suspect, Grey Wolf Legoshi, but he wouldn't hurt a fly. Or would he? Will Dwarf Rabbit Haru bring out the beast in him, or are his feelings for her something else? Elfin Lead. In the near future, some girls are born mutated. Known as Diclonius, this new species is believed to have been chosen by God to wipe out mankind. Unlike regular humans, Diclonius have two horns on their heads and vectors, invisible hands. Contained within a research facility unknown to the world, the Diclonius are experimented upon mercilessly. Many die or develop a hate for mankind. One such creature, Lucy, is said to be the first of the Diclonius. She escapes from the facility, but while fleeing, she takes a bullet to the head and is seemingly killed. However, it seems Lucy isn't quite dead yet. She's instead developed an alternate personality called Nyu. She's washed up on the shore where two people, Kota and Yuka, find her and bring her home, unaware that such a monster still lurks within Nyu. Monster. Dr. Kenzo Tenma is a genius surgeon working in post-Cold War Germany who has a bright future ahead of him. He is admired by his colleagues, loved by his patients, and due to marry his boss's daughter, the beautiful Eva Heinemann. One day, when two patients in desperate need of emergency surgery are wheeled into his hospital, Tenma faces a terrible choice of saving the orphaned boy who came first or the mayor of Dusseldorf, whose recovery would raise the hospital's profile and boost his own career. Against the demands of his superior, Tenma does what he believes is right and saves the child. However, his decision not only damages his prospects, but unleashes a chain of events so horrific that it might have come from the depths of his worst nightmares. Laden with guilt, Tenma begins a journey across Germany in search of a formidable young man who will challenge his morals, his love for life, and his very sanity. Ghost Hunt Mai Taniyama is a first-year high school student who lives a carefree life telling ghost stories with her friends. One day, she meets Kazuya Shibuya, the head of Shibuya Psychic Research, and together she tags along to help him investigate paranormal activities in a haunted school building. His assistant Lin was hurt during an incident to protect Mai from danger, so what more can Mai do than to take the job as Shibuya's assistant? Along with a team of other ghost hunters, they will uncover the mystery of a strange case coming their way, while Mai starts to discover her own abilities. D. Gray Man. Alan Walker is not your average 15-year-old boy. He is an exorcist and a member of the Black Order, an organization charged by the church with the elimination of Akuma. The Akuma are the minions of the Millennium Earl, an evil demon-like entity intending to cleanse the world by destroying the entire human race in the manner of Noah's Great Flood. Alan and the other exorcists are special people who are compatible with a substance named Innocence, which allows them to form anti-Akuma weapons and as such, exorcists are the only ones capable of fighting the Akuma. Alan and his friends must battle to save humanity from the Akuma and Earl's evil plans. Dead Man Wonderland Middle school student Ganta Igarashi witnessed the slaughter of his entire class by the mysterious Red Man, and as the only survivor, he was labeled a mass murderer and sentenced to death. 
now an inmate at the privately owned prison and amusement park known as Dead Man Wonderland, Ganta must try to survive in a place where inmates are the main attraction in brutal gladiator-style games. At the same time, he must attempt to uncover the truth behind the Red Man, his mysterious childhood friend Shiro, and why he was the only survivor that bloody day. Vampire Princess Miyu In the human world, there live demonic invaders named Shinma, who prey upon the fragile soul of humans. The only hope for the humans is one of demon kind, Miyu, who is fated to destroy the Shinma and send them back to whence they came. Although half-human herself, as well as living amongst them as a typical high school student, she bears no compassion for those she saves, as well as condemns. Along with Larva, her subservient, Miyu sets out to destroy evil, one Shinma at a time. Made in Abyss Young Riko has spent her entire childhood dreaming of exploring the Abyss, an enormous pit and series of caves filled with wonders and terrors that only the staunchest cave raiders have survived to bring back ancient artifacts from its depths. No one knows how deep the pit is, but Riko's own mother disappeared into it years ago, leaving her daughter behind with a powerful urge to follow after her and learn the Abyss's mysteries for herself. One day Riko discovers a boy who seems to have originated from the Abyss and appears to be a sort of robot. Can he aid the little girl in her quest to find her missing mother? Or will the children become the Abyss's next victims? Higudashi When They Cry Meibata Keiichi, an ordinary high school boy, has transferred to a new school in Himanizawa, a small rural village. At the outset, everything seems peaceful, and Keiichi becomes friends with a nice group of schoolgirls with whom he spends many idle summer afternoons. Suddenly, violence encroaches upon the blissful peace of the village, and Keiichi becomes entangled in an endless cycle of fear and death. The inconsistent but inevitable horrors of Himanizawa are told and retold, becoming an endless and inescapable nightmare of insanity. Will it end even if the mystery of Himanizawa is solved? Happy Sugar Life Beautiful high school girl named Satuo Matsuzaka believes she has finally found the meaning of love when she begins living with a younger girl. Previously, Sato never refused the advances of any guy around her, but that changes when she meets the girl Shio. The background and age of the mysterious girl are unclear, and when Sato is with Shio, she experiences a very sweet feeling, which she understands as love. In order to protect that feeling, Sato is willing to do anything, even if it means committing murder. Good night, Poon Poon. Poon Poon is a relatively normal elementary school student. He goes to lessons, does his homework, and gets on well with his classmates. Unfortunately, it's everyone else around him that's bonkers, with a crowd of crazy teachers playing hide-and-seek or having extreme reactions to even the tiniest situation at school, his father kept at bay on domestic violence charges, and only his unemployed layabout uncle to look up to, Poon Poon's life is anything but simple. However, despite the mayhem surrounding him, Poon Poon still continues to quietly live on, contemplating his dreams, experiencing the joy and terror of falling in love, and trying to deal with his anxieties about sex, religion, and growing up. I put this one in the iceberg because it gave me existential dread unlike any other manga, okay? Ninja Scroll Jubei Kibagami is just a wandering swordsman minding his own business, until fate lands him in the middle of a battle with the terrifying devils of Kimon. Now the fate of all of Japan lies in the hands of a vagabond samurai, a deadly female ninja, and a perverted old monk as they take on an enemy who is, literally, immortal. Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust In the distant future, the world lies in ruins and vampires rule the land. Mercenary vampire hunters fight the terrible forces of darkness, for a price, the most notorious of them all being the half-vampire named D. However, despite his actions that help humanity, he finds himself shunned by those he would save. When a girl named Charlotte is kidnapped by the vampire lord Mayer, her father hires D to bring her back, dead or alive. Competing with the vampire hunting Marcus brothers for the prize, D encounters Meyer first. But in the middle of their confrontation, Charlotte calls out Meyer's name in worry, and Meyer reveals that she is accompanying him of her own free will. Perfect Blue. When popular pop idol Mima decided to retire from her group Chom and become an actress, she had no idea that one person's obsession would soon spiral out of control, with death threats, letter bombs, and a forged website which details her every move 
Mima finds herself slowly becoming trapped in a nightmare she can't escape. With murders piling up and her mental state slowly degrading, can she discover who the culprit is before she becomes the next victim? Darwin's Game An unpredictable battle of superpowers, Kaname Sudo, an ordinary high school student, receives an invitation email to try a mysterious app called Darwin's Game. Kaname, upon launching the app, is drawn into a game where players fight one another using superpowers called sigils. Without knowing the reason for all this, can Kaname survive furious battles against the powerful players who attack him? Aoi Bungaku series. Sometimes the greatest distance is between people. Whether a man alienates himself from society with a facade of cheerfulness, or two friends fail to communicate their feelings of betrayal, invisible barriers plague mankind. Although love should bring people together, when a stoic renter and a dutiful monk choose to court a widow's daughter, their mutual affections drive a bitter gap between them. During each encounter filled with mistrust and despair, the flaws of human nature slowly reveal themselves. High-Rise Invasion On the roof of a high-rise building, a young girl named Yuri witnesses a masked figure split a man's head open with an axe. It's not exactly an everyday occurrence for a high schooler, but things only get weirder from there. Yuri soon finds herself in a strange world of skyscrapers, with only two options, escape or fight past the mysterious masked figures, or leap to her death. Another 26 years ago, something terrible happened in a middle school's third year classroom. A popular, talented student named Misaki suddenly died, and the ramifications of that incident have caused each third year class since then to live in fear. It is now 1998, and Koichi Sakakibata has just transferred into the mysterious classroom, curious about the mysterious secret that his peers are hiding from him. He's drawn to one enigmatic girl named Mei Misaki, a quiet student who wears an eye patch and warns him about getting involved with her, and he continues to seek her out against the pleas of his classmates. And that's when people begin to violently die. Terraformers after humanity's first manned mission to the Red Planet was lost, a second expedition arrives. The explorers prepare to exterminate the cockroaches that were used to transform the Martian environment, but are shocked to discover that the insects have mutated into giant, aggressive humanoids with one overriding goal. Exterminate the humans. However, this crew of explorers has each undergone the Bugs Procedure, a terrifying experimental surgery designed to make them more than human. Magical Girl Apocalypse All Ki Kogami wants is to have a normal, boring life. But when a horde of homicidal magical girls descends and kills almost all of his classmates, turning them into undead monsters, Ki's dreams vanish into a wave of gore and chaos. Alongside other survivors like the busty Yoruka, childhood friend Skune, and would-be medical student Ren, can Ki manage to escape a horrifying death one day at a time while discovering the truth about this invading force? Blood, the last vampire. In the time of the Vietnam War, an American military base in Japan is plagued with a rash of killings whose assailant is unknown. Enter Saya, a mysterious young woman who happens to be the last of the vampire race and has been charged by her government agency employer to investigate the sinister killings. With demons and creatures abounding, Saya must infiltrate a school to put a stop to the bloodshed, unless the monsters get to her first. Pet Shop of Horrors The mysterious Count D owns a pet shop in Chinatown. However, it's no ordinary pet shop. D sells exotic and rare pets that often have the appearance of a human in the eyes of their new owners. Since these animals are so special, each one is only sold if the customer signs a contract agreeing to abide by the instructions provided, or suffer the dire consequences, all whilst conveniently releasing the shop itself from any responsibility. However, when some customers break their contracts and a series of incidents occur as a result, this small business doesn't go unnoticed. Investigator Leon Orcott begins to investigate D, suspecting him of slave smuggling, but can he get to the bottom of the events surrounding the shop, or will he just be dragged into the Count's pace of afternoon tea and cake? Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead. Surviving a zombie apocalypse beats being a wage slave any day. After spending years slaving away for a soul-crushing company, Akira's life has lost its luster. He lives in a trash-filled apartment, his pay is abysmal, and he can't even muster up the nerve to confess his love to his beautiful co-worker. But when a zombie apocalypse ravages his town, it gives him the push he needs to live life for himself. 
Now Akira's on a mission to complete all 100 items on his bucket list before he, well, kicks the bucket. Ubel Blot. Kuitzo is a master swordsman who, along with 13 other heroes, was sent by the Salazan Empire to block an invasion of their enemy, Wishtek. Along the way, three died, four betrayed the others, and seven defeated the traitors and returned as heroes. At least, that's what people believe. In reality, the seven heroes were the real traitors, defeating the four true champions after the seven had fled the battle in cowardice. Kuitzel has bided his time for 20 years, honing his skills and recovering from the brink of death so that he may avenge his fallen comrades. The time for vengeance has finally come, and all who stand in his way shall be dismembered without hesitation. But it won't be easy, as everyone believes the lies of the traitors. With all the soldiers in the land and the public against them, Kuitzel and his ragtag allies may have to sacrifice everything if they are to prevail against the might of the entire nation. Sankarea, Undying Love. Chihiro is a macabre-loving high school student who collects horror films and thinks shacking up with a zombie chick would be hot. But though the idea of death is alluring, when faced with the actual death of his beloved pet cat, the teen buckles under the grief and becomes determined to bring his deceased companion back to life. Every night, he sneaks off to an abandoned building and attempts to brew a resurrection potion. And it's here that he meets Rhea, the beautiful daughter of the well-to-do Sanka family. However, the girl is having some troubles of her own. And after a mix-up, ends up zombified herself. Now the horror fanatic is living the dream with his very own zombie girlfriend. But how will the pair deal with Rhea's new diet and the onset of rigor mortis? Hell girl. Has someone done something to hurt you or the ones you love? Are you seeking revenge? Rumor has it there's a website that can service your needs. Titled Hotline to Hell, it contains a form that can be accessed only at midnight. Type in a name, and the Hell Girl will carry out your bidding. For a price, for though your appetite for revenge will be satisfied, your soul will also be condemned to hell after you die. But who is the Hell Girl? And does she care whether your revenge is justified? Apparently not, as long as she gets more souls. Minotaro Mochizuki Minotaro Mochizuki began his manga craft at an early age, and after graduating the Tokyo Academy for Design, he was awarded the Kodansha Prize for upcoming authors. He would initially find success with his first serialization, Batashi Kinyo, but later would become known for two of his popular horror series, Zakishi Ona and Dragonhead. Nokuto Koike. Not much is known about Nokuto Koike's background as a mangaka, but he is known for various off-the-wall horror series like 6000, Gaju, Kuromachi, and Mushroom. K. Sanbei. After graduating from high school, Sanbei moved to Tokyo to study background art production at the Tokyo designer Gakuen College. He initially made his debut in the game magazine Dengaki Adventures, and during his time in school, Sanbei came across a job listing in Weekly Shonen Jump from Hirohiko Araki, requesting for new assistance. While not particularly a fan of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series, its variety of backgrounds and foreign settings enticed him to submit an application. After applying twice, Sanbei was accepted into Araki's team around the time of Battle Tendencies serialization, and was eventually promoted to Chief Assistant. He would go on to work with Araki for a total of eight years before leaving halfway through Golden Wind to pursue his own career as a manga artist. He has dabbled in multiple genres since, and is most well known for his popular series Erased. But outside of that, he has also made multiple horror manga, such as Hozuki Island and Morio no Yurikago. The Ring, Juon, One Last Call, and Dark Water. I grouped these four together to save time, but these four horror film franchises all have manga adaptations. Some follow the stories present in the films or novels, while others are unique interpretations. Ghost Talker's Daydream The life of a spiritual medium is not an easy one, being constantly surrounded by spirits, each with a problem to solve. The albino Misaki Saiki is one such medium who finds herself solving mysteries, fighting spirits, and even getting possessed on occasion. And since talking to spirits doesn't manage to pay the bills, she's also a dominatrix on the side, together with her spirit-fearing and martial arts-loving partner, an apprentice, and her very own stalker. Misaki will help spirits come to rest while fulfilling the desires of her S&M clients. Creature Akira Takashiro is a normal high school student who is devoted to playing basketball. 
In the early afternoon on a day that should have gone like any other, a gigantic earthquake suddenly strikes the city. There, in the school rubble, Akita witnesses a mountain of dead bodies, and an unknown creature that eats them. Male. Private detective Reiji Akiba has a theory about those awkward moments and weird coincidences we all encounter in life. There is no such thing as a coincidence. They are actually encounters with the dead, their way of sending us a message. But you may not want to open such strange mail from beyond. Not unless you can see the ghostly attachment, like Akiba can. And not unless you carry a gun that can kill what isn't alive, like Akiba's aptly named Kagutsuchi, the tool between God and Earth, digging a divine grave to lay to rest the evil dead. Portis. Years ago, Portis was the hottest new game craze with a twist. It was rumored to have a secret stage in which a little boy would appear and ask you to come to his side. If you said yes, it was game over for you. In the present, Asami is a typical teen whose friend Chihadu has been recently skipping class. However, when she discovers that Chihadu has been playing Portis with dangerous consequences, it's up to her and her teacher Keigo to uncover the truth behind the game. Reiko at the Zombie Shop Terror has struck the sleepy little town of Shiraike. A serial killer stalks the streets murdering innocent girls. 29 grisly murders have been committed with no clues to catch the killer. That is, until the town receives a strange visitor, a beautiful young woman who can raise the dead. She is Reiko the Zombie Shop, necromancer for hire. For a price, she'll wake your dead, if only to find a clue to their demise. But she's not responsible for what the dead will say or do once they awaken. Corpse Party, Tortured Souls. One rainy night after a school festival, a group of students from Kisaragi Academy decide to perform the Sakiko Ever After charm, which will unite them forever as friends. Once the ritual is done, a sudden earthquake transports them to Heavenly Host, a torn down elementary school. Unbeknownst to Satoshi and his friends, however, is the horrific past behind it which culminated in its demolition. As they look for each other and try to escape from Heavenly Host, they soon find out their lives are at the mercy of those affected by that same bloodied past. Soul Liquid Chambers a girl with prosthetic limbs and a tragic past wanders a zombie-ridden 23rd century Earth, now known as Death's Amusement Park. Overrun by monsters, the post-apocalyptic wasteland is the last place a little girl should call home, but she's developed a unique coping mechanism. Genwaku no Kodo. Strange things are happening all over town and Koichi Amano's nightmares have started again. Several clans have been spurred into action as the past gradually resurfaces. Just what is going on, and how do the Amano brothers fit into the picture? The Island of Giant Insects. Students from Hosho Academy High School were aboard a plane when it crash lands under mysterious circumstances. The heroine, Oribe Matsumi, and her classmates wash ashore on an island. The surviving passengers decide to wait for help to come, but the island turns out to be inhabited by giant insects. Matsumi wakes up on a beach and finds her classmate Matsumo Ayumi. They use their wits to produce food, believing that help will come in three days. They decide to endure it until then. Ingoshima the Yoshinomiya Municipal High School second year students embarked on what they'd hoped was an educational trip with their friends and away from family, but it was not meant to be. Their ship was hit by unexpected rough seas and crashed on a strange island. The surviving students are trying to understand what happened, but soon realize they are not alone on this island, and the locals don't appear to be very friendly to strangers. Shikabanecho Undead the urban exploration of two teenagers causes them to run into a mysterious box, which encloses those infected with a virus called Corpse. In that city, there is a teacher named Katsuragi Zakuro, who hides a secret. Gakuin Densetsu, Hasami Ona. There's an urban legend about a girl, Yomi-san, who hated her appearance and killed herself, and whose father stuffed her corpse. Supposedly, her taxidermied corpse attacks beautiful girls to steal their body parts. When pretty girls are injured at school, some people blame a jealous pretty student. But could it really be Yomi-san? Erotic Horror Chieti is beautiful and popular and envied by everyone. Even her friend, the plain and shy Yuko. Then the email goes out. You can now transfer your flaws and imperfections to Chieti Nanjo. It's not a joke. It's a curse. The Tarot Cafe Meet Pamela a tarot card reader who helps supernatural beings living in the human world. 
She'll help anyone, whether they're a love-stricken cat, a vampire spending eternal life running from his one true love, an unattractive waitress looking for the man of her dreams, or even a magician who creates a humanoid doll to serve the woman he loves. Although she is good-natured, there is a deep dark secret that she must deal with before she can move on to the next life. Kyofu Shinbun. There exists a horrific newspaper called the Fear Newspaper that foretells of people's extreme misfortunes. Mononobe Koshoten Kai Kitan. Shotaro is a man of few words. He manages a used bookstore called Mononobe Koshoten and has an efficient young boy named Shiro to help out with the work while he reads the day away. But behind this normal and mundane facade, Shotaro has another job, the collection of some rather unpleasant old books. Dusk Maiden of Amnesia Teichi Nia is a first-year middle school student at Seiko Private Academy, an institution known for mysterious occurrences. The boy quickly finds these rumors to be true when he meets Yuko Kanoe, a beautiful, mischievous girl who quickly takes a liking to him, and happens to be a ghost who seemingly no one else can see. Unable to remember anything about her past, Yuko enlists Teichi's help to uncover the truth and together they join the school's Paranormal Investigation Club. With fellow members Momoe and Kirie, the pair will investigate the many strange happenings around campus, including the shadowy circumstances surrounding Yuko's death. Karada Sagashi Asuka is a high school student who sees the apparition of a dead student named Haruka, asking Asuka to find her body. As the story progresses, Asuka and her friends attempt to find the eight scattered pieces of Haruka's corpse in the school, and learn more about the red person that is hunting them as they do so. The red person hunts students who are alone at school to kill them, and until they exit the school gates, the red person will keep appearing before them. When a red person kills a student, it scatters the student's body into eight pieces, and tasks another person to find the pieces in the school. If Asuka fails to find Haruka's body, the day will keep repeating, and she and her friends will keep dying until they do. Zombie Loan Michiru Kita is a girl with an unusual ability. When she notices dark rings around the necks of two of her classmates, rings that are invisible to any normal person, she knows that their lives are at risk. She decides to approach them in order to warn them or help them in some way, but soon discovers that there is more to the two boys than even her eyes could see. They are zombies, working for the mysterious company known as Z-Loan in order to pay their debts. And so, Michiru finds herself helping the short-tempered Chika and the cold, indifferent Chito in ways that she'd never imagined, fighting off illegal zombies to collect their bounties. But these illegal zombies, usually very basic and driven by instinct, seem to be getting more intelligent each time. Kudan no Gotoshi Seven college students are coming back from their graduations. During the travel, they are shocked to see a strange, cow-like creature with a human face. This accident means they only have seven days left to live. What will they do to stay alive until the fated day? Godchild A grotesque gift holds a clue to the Kane family's past. A mortician's daughter has deadly designs on one of Kane's closest friends, and a woman from Rift's past may have murder on her mind. Sobute Kawashubeshi. A mysterious mansion has towered proudly over the Tokyo district of Numanakati since the Taisho period. Those who enter either never escape or leave having experienced horrors untold, and with the desire to take revenge. Ibitsu. There's an urban legend that says late at night, sometimes a young girl dressed in gothic Lolita clothing will appear by garbage dumps to ask a question. Any who answer will, without fail, die a twisted death. And tonight, another young boy will find himself enveloped by this horror. Inugami One day Fumiki meets a strange dog at the factory, a dog who can understand human speech and push blades out from its forehead. The mysterious number 23 is carved onto its ear. Although there are many unsolved mysteries about the beast, the two begin to communicate and build trust. 23 arrived at the town following the voice of a higher power, which said, Observe mankind. Meanwhile, a giant organization is moving behind the scenes to capture 23. The leader Kiryu wants 23 so that he can control Tokoyono Kuni, the land across the ocean of the dead, ancestors, and human spirits, a paradise of eternal life and decadence. Shike Game Seven former fellow middle school students are forced to participate in a death game by an eerie rabbit. They have never met after graduating, but now they must complete six death games within one hour to escape their entrapment. 
A game of despair begins as their dark past is revealed and their fragile relationships are put to the test. Museum. The serial killer laughing in the rain. The serial killer is laughing in the rain. Punishment, dog food. Punishment, know your mother's pain. Punishment, love split evenly. Punishment, forever beautiful. The frogman from hell executes his punishments. Aragni, sign of vermilion. Rin's new apartment building is a far cry from the sunny, idyllic photos from the rental brochure. And instead of offering sanctuary from a dangerous world outside, it oozes decay and dread. Residents exhibit unsettling, peculiar qualities and grotesque eruptions. Sinister forces seem to lie around every corner. And if Rin wants to survive, she will have to discover the terrifying truth, one she has kept buried within. Until your bones rot. The summer they were 11, they killed a man and buried his body in a cave. Since then, every year, one summer night has marked a ritual, a ritual to never forget and never betray. Five years have passed, their 16th summer. The body, now a skeleton, unraveled lies, a faceless blackmailer. The phone rings and a life is torn apart. The bones, like their crime, never rotting, never fading away. Now, a living hell begins. The World Yamizukan. This anime will be in an omnibus short format that will tell the stories of the strange and bizarre in our world, including UFOs, cryptids, curses, ancient civilizations, supernatural powers, spiritual experiences, bizarre cases, different dimensions, and urban legends, told in a picture show style. The anime seeks to invoke the retro atmosphere of pulp horror stories that were popular in the 60s and 70s in magazines. Green Worlds. In the early 21st century, mankind is decimated when plants rise up, eating the populace and swallowing cities with their foliage. The remaining humans retreat underground in hopes of a safe haven, but nowhere is safe from the unspeakable horrors that want to hunt them down, and supplies are running thin. Bochimon. A hikikomori gets texted help me from an anonymous source. Feelings of heroism coax him to the outside world, which he finds has been badly damaged, with broken houses and bits of debris everywhere. He searches for survivors, but all he finds are corpses and ghosts till he gets to his sister's body. He has ESP, so he converses with her ghost and she tags along in an attempt to find more survivors. Eventually, they do find someone that casts a shadow, but they may not be as human as they seem. Biomega in the future, the N5S infection is slowly spreading throughout the world, turning everyone it contacts into a zombie-like drone. Zuichi Kanoe and his motorcycle AI companion, Fuyu Kanoe, are sent out by Toha Heavy Industries in order to find humans resistant to infection and save humanity. Competing bio-enhanced agents from the Data Recovery Foundation have different goals, however. How to best extort the situation for their own profit. Tokyo Dragon Knight it was just a normal day for Kokodo and his friends, until they received a grim shock. Their world has been invaded by dragons. These vicious dragons consumed every human they saw and destroyed everything in their path. Japan's military turned out to be useless against these creatures. Just as all hope was lost, a mysterious classified military division appeared, with knowledge of these dragon secrets. What is this unknown division? How do they have information on these never-before-seen dragons? Where did these dragons come from? Can Kokodo and his friends unravel these mysteries before it's too late? Fukuju Toshi Kyo Ayaya is a third-year high school student who excels in everything he does, even sports. With nothing exciting happening in his unchanging life, he spent his days bored out of his mind, but he had no idea that this life of his was about to collapse. He went to Shibuya with three other people he usually hung out with, Minto, Renka, and Mawada. There, they witnessed a gruesome scene, as the clothes of people coming and going through town transformed into ferocious monsters, tearing humans into pieces. Everywhere in Shibuya, every type of clothing and sort of textiles and fibers started eating people and overrunning the town. Amidst his crumbling life, can Kyo survive this terror? Otogi Matsuri a teenaged outsider with strange new powers is Earth's only hope against a horde of demonic invaders. When high school student Yosuke Suruga accidentally breaks an ancient Shinto shrine, his physical body merges with the Bow of Suzaku, an enigmatic weapon from ancient times. 
Yosuke's only hope lies with Izo, the eccentric history teacher who wields the Spear of Seiyu, another mystic weapon that, when combined with the bow of Suzaku, may be the world's only hope against the ever-growing threat of the monster realm. BL of the Dead a collection of several stories, situated around a research laboratory where the people who are alive and not infected by this disease try to survive while an overwhelming amount of zombies roam around the research facility making it impossible to escape. King's Game Kanazawa Nobuaki has transferred to a high school far from where he used to live. Due to an incident at his old school, Nobuaki is afraid of getting close to his new classmates and keeps himself at a distance, but he starts opening up because of a sports day interclass relay. Then, a single text message from someone calling themselves the king is sent to everyone in class. Nobuaki's classmates thinks it's a simple prank, and don't take it seriously, but Nobuaki knows that a death game is about to begin, and struggles to oppose it. Oyayubi Sagashi there is a metropolitan legend which is about a girl assaulted and cut in pieces by mysterious assassins in a building now abandoned. The legend continues with telling that a finger of the girl has never been found, and whoever will find it can ask for a wish, which will be granted. A group of guys, for fun, choose to try going to that place and look for the finger, but one of them disappears. Seven years passed since that tragic event, and the guys finally decide to go look for their friend. Kudo no Syndrome if you want your body back, won't you participate in the mannequin game? A high school student who was on the brink of death from a traffic accident woke up to see a completely different person. He was told his mission through a speaker. Curtain rises with a life-risking game. If you let your guard down, you will instantly die. It's the ultimate survival suspense. Heartless. A beautiful incubus, luring humans with his looks and eating them, lives in the present age. With him lives his lover, a man called Manuel. Before the two, living quietly in the woods, appears a self-entitled heresy-hunting cult. Regen. The month is February, but it hasn't snowed all winter. Kanan's father is often away on business trips and might be getting a little too friendly with his pretty young female subordinate, which Kanan doesn't approve of so soon after her mother's death. Her little brother collects insects, but they're dying off. It turns out that these deaths are the first of many a plague to come down. First it's the insects, inexplicably dropping dead everywhere, then it's the rats, looking for a new food source. And things just keep getting worse. Halloween Densetsu A tragedy happened on the night of October 31st. A young woman went mad and killed all of her family. What is the connection between this tragedy and a few similar tragedies before that? Why did it always happen on the night of Halloween? Gamudakan Hired for an eviction of an apartment resident, lawyer Midorikawa visited a mysterious apartment. Since the visit, he has been haunted by these visions of angels, small naked girls who have faces that of a doll. These angels freely teleport between TV, phone, and computer monitors and enter the human body. They feed off the human spirit, what they call nectar. Are these angels real? Are they part of a horrific dream? Through Midorikawa's body, they escape the infected apartment. Now, they spread their horrors upon the entire city. Dark Edge After his mother's death, Kuro Takagi transfers to Yotsuji Private High School, where his father is the proprietor. The school had a peculiar regulation which stated, students shall not remain on campus after sundown. Breaking the regulation on the first day of attendance, Kuro and his classmates are attacked by zombies that suddenly appear. In fact, they learn that the faculty members and even some missing students are zombies who possess an evil gene. Kuro and his classmates somehow escape this time, but this was just a prelude to a more bizarre campus life that awaits them. Walking Meat In an alternate world, the Japanese corporation Flesh Inc. has managed to create zombies on domestic soil during the Roaring Sixties, using voodoo techniques imported from Africa, and it has built a fortune thereafter by selling zombie products of all kinds. Instant noodles, soft drinks, hamburgers, pet food, and cosmetics. But when a trio of self-centered millennials on their first workday get trapped inside a fully automated zombie farm with their old school supervisor and a horde of the undead running amok, overcoming generation gaps becomes a matter of survival. Variante Hosho Aiko should be dead. To be precise, when she came back home one day, she found her entire family slaughtered by a grotesque monster. 
The creature attacked and killed her as well, but she finds herself awakening in a mysterious room, taken care of by Dr. Kuchigawa. She has amnesia, but when another monster appears before her in the room, she regains her memories and her left arm changes into a powerful weapon, very similar to that of the monster, which she destroys. Mashira, Satsuriku no Mira. After 12 long years, a white-haired boy by the name of Iori comes back to Mashira Village, the place where his childhood trauma began, only to find yet another horror awaiting him. Kamigami no Akuma. A mysterious man butchers his way through a busy train car in Tokyo. This marks the starting point of a series of mysterious incidents. Renji Amiya is attacked by Toriko, a prostitute with whom he is in love with, but he is saved by Father Mitakura, a renowned exorcist who reveals to him the existence of demons. Dark Metro. Anna almost descends to the dark side when she follows the suicidal Ray down an escalator to hell. Seiya pulls her back. But will they make it out of Tokyo's secret metro lines in time to escape Rei and the ghosts who inhabit the Tokyo underground? Satanister. Partake in the horror, the terror, the blood-curdling madness of the serial killer mind, and the one who dares exterminate them. School Ningyo. Rumors tell of mermaids that appear at the school's pool at night. It is said that if you eat their flesh, you'll be able to have the person you love, but only if you can see and catch them. Yoshiko and Haruko are on the hunt for the mermaids, having found a notebook that chronicles the ways that previous girls found and ate the mermaids. In the dead of night, they say a chant and the mermaids appear, but they aren't quite what was expected. Final Girl A guy finds himself transported into the world of a classic horror movie, and what's more, as the slutty character who dies first. Joshikose ni Kigitada I'm a middle-aged man on the inside, but I look like a high school girl on the outside. I swear I'll take my own body back. Toshi Densetsu Monogatari Hikiko Satoshi returns to his hometown after years of being away, carrying with him terrible memories of his past. He remembers the day Satoko Kisiki joined his class. It was the rainy season, and her unusual body made her an easy target for cruel bullying. Though Satoshi never took part in the mean tricks that were played on her, however, soon he found himself relentlessly chased by a mysterious and deformed girl whose long dark hair obscured her face. Was this a simple case of a joke gone too far, or was a poor, mistreated girl looking to take revenge on those who made her life miserable? Shibuya Goldfish Meek Hajime Sukiyoda visits Shibuya, and he's in way over his head. But it's not because Hajime is in one of the trendiest places in Tokyo. Shibuya is actually under attack by man-eating goldfish. Is anywhere safe from this aquatic invasion? Jinmin. After a few years, our main character Jinyu Masato returns home. Due to his nature, he loves animals and he also likes to visit them. Because of this, he loved to visit the zoo since he was small, and that's how he developed a close relationship with Hanayo. However, Masato gradually starts to notice some strange incidents happening in the zoo, and after that, he's thrown into this unexpected world. Innocent Devil Separate from these serial killers who shocked the world, there exist offenders known as Innocent Devils, who murder without malice. A criminal psychologist and her beautiful assistant probe the depths of their minds. Dead End Shiryu's ordinary life as a poor construction worker gets turned upside down when he comes across a naked girl, Lucy, who's fallen out of the sky. Her strange and unique personality entices him, and he introduces her to his apartment buddies. But after leaving for just a few minutes, he returns to the apartment to find Lucy gone, all his friends slaughtered, and an ogre-like stranger standing amidst the carnage. The big man suddenly pulls Shiryu out of the apartment building just before it explodes. Shiryu gets pushed down into the sewage system of the city and is saved by a mysterious man, Kiriko. A small group of adults have been invited to a reunion at their old high school to remember the loss of their classmate Kiriko, after receiving a letter from Kei. Not knowing who Kei is, Ryusuke, a young man with short black hair that used to know Kiriko, has to uncover the truth of Kiriko's mysterious death as he slowly regains his memories as his fellow classmates start suddenly dying around him in the most horrific manner, he realizes that it's far too late to say sorry. Manga of the Dead In a Japan, where zombies are lurking in the streets, the small Mika and Makoto are still human unlike their parents, that day after day become more and more hungry. Fetish For a long while now, I've been prone to losing things. It's the things most important to me that I lose and it's always after I lose them that I realize it. And then, 
there suddenly returned to me. Hiki. When Rin was shuffling through his desk with his friend Yama one day, he had no idea he'd chance across a treasure map shoved behind one of the drawers. But when the two friends, along with Chiku and Himiko, follow the trail, all they find is an abandoned wardrobe with a drawer that refuses to open. And that's when Rin's nightmares truly begin. Toko. Ranmaru is a young cop with a dark past. As one of the few survivors of a mindless slaughter in his apartment block, he joins a special unit called Toki to avenge his parents. In his first case, the already ghastly murder scene turns to one of terror, as the inhuman killers start to massacre the police. After being saved at the last minute by a secret unit named Toko, who wields swords instead of guns, Ranmaru's mind is filled with questions and he is determined to find out the answers, no matter what it takes. What are these monsters, and why did they recognize him? Can you just die, my darling? Taku Kamishiro's crush on Mika Hanazono has always been one-sided, until one fateful day. His feelings turn into murderous impulse instead. You won't be able to predict what each new page will bring. The Quiz Viewers participate in a heavily advertised new quiz show where the winner earns 100 million yen, but waiting there is a cruel game of death and competition. What will be the fate of the 10 finalists? And just what is the true purpose of the quiz? Signal 100. A group of high school students spend their peaceful days freely until they are chosen as participants of a game where everyone is hypnotized until they commit suicide. No one is safe from sudden death. So what will they do to avoid their fates? Mantis Woman. Get ready for spine-tingling chills in this creepy anthology filled with ghoulish neighbors, a supernatural serial killer, and other creatures feasting on fear and blood. Pity any innocent bystander that stumbles across their paths, for her life will be forever altered. That's if she even survives. Blood Rain. A group of scattered people who were friends in high school start getting killed one by one, and danger soon follows the heroine, Aihara Kumi, as she starts suspecting that one of them could be the murderer. Suicide Club When Sayo was in middle school, her father had a mental breakdown, and that's when things began to change. Kyoko, her best friend, noticed the girl becoming distant, and Saya even began selling her body for money. But when the troubled teen met Mitsuko and joined her suicide club, Kyoko watched Saya gain a new, chilling sense of purpose and a deep desire to follow Mitsuko to the grave. Can Kyoko save her best friend's life when all she wants to do is die? Morio no Hako Between August and October 1952, a series of unusual crimes take place in Musashino and Mitaka. The attempted murder of 14-year-old Kaneko Yuzuki, Kaneko's abduction from the strange research hospital where she was recovering, then abductions of other girls, followed by their severed limbs in custom-fitted boxes being placed in surrounding towns. News editor Morihiko Toriguchi and crime fiction writer Tatsumi Sekiguchi investigate with the help of Onmyoji Akihiko Chuzenji, alive. In 1990, Yashiro Tenshu murdered his lover and four others, sending him straight to death row. Now, the day of his execution has finally arrived, but at the last second he's given a choice, die or go to work for a mysterious group of people. Choosing life, Yashiro is taken to a room and left in the company of another death row inmate, where they go from day to day with sake and other necessities, with no idea of why they are there. That is, until from behind a glass window, they see a beautiful girl awaken. Mad Summer School It is a scorching summer in Japan, and Hiromi is studying hard for her exams as she wants to enter her university of choice. She was raised by her mother, as her father, a well-known researcher, had gone missing when she was much younger. One day though, on her way to school, she was attacked by a man with a knife. Is this the end, or a new beginning? Tokyo Revelation in the streets of Tokyo, demons run rampant, silently killing and possessing innocent civilians against their will. Meanwhile, in one local high school, the once ridiculed computer-loving Akito Kobayashi has returned, armed with the knowledge to summon the greatest demon of them all, Oze, to destroy all of humankind. Along with Takihiko Kuki and Marika Kusaka, spiritual ninjas that have spanned centuries protecting the gods, one man must fight to stop the evil god from resurrecting before it's too late. Chimadide Sukiban Chainsaw Gecko's weird, creepy, friendless classmate Nero has destroyed all of their mutual classmates, perverting them into her grotesque, monstrous minions. 
Now she's sending them after Gecko, the only survivor. However, Gecko is setting out, dressed in her skimpy school uniform and armed with a big chainsaw, to end Nero's mad science, no matter how many undead former friends she has to saw down on the way. Kamisama, Kisama, wo Korishitai. A high school girl stands at the edge of a building, about to take her own life. She then witnesses a brutal stabbing down below by a hooded man. She is instilled with fear at the mysterious man's cold-bloodedness, cowering as he suddenly appears at the roof. Octopus Girl Teenage monsters lose their hearts and heads in a relentlessly gory collection of dark humor and horror. Carving a comical niche in modern horror manga, Toru Yamazaki's Octopus Girl serves up the most disgusting dishes of heartbreak and revenge found on land or at sea. Have a side order of nervous laughter with your main course of blood-curdling fear, some gore with your teen angst, and some killer instincts with your... Ugh. Kawaii! These shocking vignettes will hypnotize fans of the macabre and of the absurd, as intestines, eyeballs, and fluids of all sorts shoot enthusiastically across Yamazaki's pages. Kigurumi. The story focuses around Makoto, a student whose talent is making stuffed toys. He starts researching the mysterious disease going around called Sudden Death. After finding out that his latest creation looks like the mysterious stuffed rabbit rumored to be causing it. Yakedo Shoujo. Kaname Aizawa and Shina Hinami are classmates. One day, the two bump into each other, breaking Kaname's glasses and scattering Shina's belongings. Kaname helped her and accidentally opens her secret notebook. Attraction begins between them. Nemuri no Fuchi. Eight years ago, a girl went missing while playing hide-and-seek in the forest. Starting around then, instances of labyrinths started spawning in random places, which led to an increasing amount of missing people. Katoi was one of them, when she was never found after the game of hide-and-seek she played with Shuhei. Now, eight years later, Shuhei still feels guilty for the loss of Katoi. He feels as though he, too, should be dragged into these labyrinths in the search for his long-lost friend. Now, he found an opening into the labyrinth. In it, he begins his search for the truth behind this phenomenon. Mercy Lago Mass murderers may not have much by way of career skills, but Kuruko Komori seems to have landed her dream job as a hitwoman for the Tokyo police. A license to kill other killers? That's some serious job satisfaction right there. Shiki Encased by trees that are used to make grave markers, Sotoba is a village thought to be surrounded by death a fact that soon literally becomes the case. One summer, a series of mysterious and untimely fatalities begins to plague the small rural town. With a higher than normal mortality rate for the time of year and each cause of passing remaining unknown, Toshio, the local doctor, and Seishin, the temple's vice chief monk, become suspicious and take it upon themselves to investigate. However, as the deaths begin to pile up, more people begin to wonder just what is behind this sudden epidemic. Could it have anything to do with the bizarre Kirishiki family that recently moved to the village? Lily Cat. In the distant future, employees of the Sincam Corporation board a spaceship bound for a newly discovered planet. While the voyage will take 20 years, deep sleep capsules ensure that the occupants age only a single year. Now, that time has passed and the crew awakens, only to discover a frightening partial transmission from headquarters. Two of them are not employees, they are criminals. One by one, members of the group soon begin to die for unknown reasons. And what's worse, the bodies begin to disappear. Now, these men and women must race against the clock to discover the fakes in their midst, find out the reason behind the deaths, and most importantly, stay alive at all costs. Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei At Jusei Academy, students are given the best education that money can buy. But there's a catch. Unknown to his classmates, the computer genius Akame Nakajima has misguided plans to revive the demon Loki. And unfortunately for his classmates, teacher and new transfer student, Yumiko Shirasagi, this requires plenty of sacrifices, a job that falls to them. What Nakajima doesn't know is that reviving Loki is the pretense for many demons to come, and that the fate of the world may lie in his and Yumiko's hands, if they survive long enough to defeat the ultimate evil. Oki Tenamudu Kanata and his friend Tokiji are ordinary teenagers in modern Japan. 
Mysterious deaths have begun to occur in their city, where the victim's head will transform into an animal face and explode. There are rumors about these strange incidents, but one day it happens at Kanata's school. Kanata is caught up in the incident and gains the special ability to remove his limiter, which allows him to greatly enhance a single ability of his. But after he uses it, another ability will go out of control. He encounters a mysterious beautiful woman in a black skin-tight combat suit named Shiki. She forces Kanata and Tokiji to become deeply involved in these incidents just what is going on and what mysterious organization is behind this. A world-spanning conspiracy begins to unfold. Kyochitsu Jibaku Club Three years ago, a high school boy who had been the subject of relentless bullying carried out a bombing that killed all but seven of his classmates. Now the survivors have gathered to finally put an end to their own torment. Hour of the Zombie Akida is your typical student living a conventional high school life. He has dreams and aspirations like everyone else, and an unrequited crush on his childhood friend, Kudumi. Unfortunately for him, she seems more interested in Akida's best friend, Umizawa. And yet, their innocent love triangle pales in comparison to what the three are about to experience. Even if it may yet be their saving grace, students are suddenly turning into frenzied zombies, attacking and gorging themselves upon each other's flesh. The school is being torn apart until suddenly, they stop. With the zombies apparently back to normal, the school is now divided between the previously turned and the unbitten. But how long will this peace last? And what caused students to turn in the first place? When any of your classmates could suddenly decide to have you for lunch, a friendly face can become the scariest thing in the room. Kingdom of Z When the zombie apocalypse came to Japan, Sato Masaru thought he was a goner for sure, until two super hot girls came to his rescue. But Sato's relief is short-lived once he realizes just how insane his saviors are. Kaden is a happy-go-lucky psycho, while Miki is a megalomaniac, with plans to create an undead army and rule the world. Can Sato survive being their underling, or will he take his chances with the zombies? Versailles of the Dead When en route from Austria to Mary Louise the 16th and become the Queen of France, Mary Antoinette's carriage is intercepted by bloodthirsty zombies. The sole survivor of the attack is Marie's twin brother, Albert. He heads for Versailles in his sister's gown, and instead of continuing life as himself, decides to take his sister's place. Now at the heart of the French royal court, Albert must face the undead horrors as the man who would be queen. Noah of the Blood Sea When a family of three book passage on a luxury liner, they soon realize that the glamorous cruise ship is nothing but a facade as a series of mysterious killings spread throughout the ship. With the sea providing no escape, how will they survive? Aku no Higan What would you do if money could be exchanged for life? Sell 10 years of life for a fortune, or give up everything to buy one more year. At the age of 17, a high school boy who has it all together meets a man with superpowers that are both godly and demonic. Through a deadly struggle for his life, he stumbles upon a world on the other side. Tokyo Zombie Fujio and Mitsuo are two would-be wrestlers who spend their days practicing moves near Dark Fuji, a man-made garbage mountain where bodies are buried alongside industrial waste. Unfortunately, years of contamination led to zombies rising from the pile, and as Tokyo quickly becomes overrun by the horde, Fujio and Mitsuo are separated. As society falls, will the duo ever see each other again? Umi Neko, When They Cry in the year 1986, 18 members of the Ushiromiya family head to the Roken Island, where Kinzo, the elderly head of the household, will soon choose one of them as his successor. A portrait of the Golden Witch Beatrice greets them as they arrive at the family mansion, along with a disturbing epitaph. She will be resurrected on the ninth twilight after a number of bloody sacrifices. Unfortunately for the group, the statements come true, and soon, the carnage begins. Will anybody walk away from the ominous island, or are their destinies due to be forever ruled by Beatrice? Kuroisha no Desert A story about the codename Black Doctor who secretly dismantled the bodies of cruel murderers, bought and sold organs, and turned them into big bucks. Arm of Canaan 
Deep within the mountains of Tibet, secluded from the mortal world, sits the Arm of Kanan, an instrument of inconceivably wicked power, resting safely outside the grasp of humanity. Until now. Bogyaku no Kokeko. Meet Yuenji, a boy abandoned by his father, and the oldest kid in his foster home, who's fed up with adults like his selfish orphanage principal. His dream is to buy the orphanage, so that everyone there can live happily together. With that goal in mind, he decided to get a job, and went to his high school graduation. But from that day forward, the world suddenly changed. Adults have now started to morph into giant chickens and attack children. Can you protect the children and his dream during this crisis? Yamada Yusuke Gekijo. Misa and Tatsuya have been dating for two years, and have come to the amusement park today to ride the roller coaster. They strap in, ready for a thrilling ride, but little did the pair and others aboard know that they would be forced to play a sadistic game where they must hang from the safety bar and fall one by one, until only a single person was left. Who will survive this brutal game? and who is orchestrating it from behind the scenes. Hideshi Hino Hideshi Hino is another pillar of the horror manga industry, but seems to be much less well-known in the West. He always had a love for film, but Shigeru Sugiuda and Yoshiharu Suge inspired him to try manga instead, releasing his first professional work in 1967. In 1971, he would start publishing his popular series, Hideshi Hino's Shocking Theater, many stories of which were inspired from his own life experiences. Hideshi Hino's influence has no doubt spanned decades, influencing various mangaka and establishing himself as one of the most prevalent horror manga artists of all time. Some of his most popular works to check out would be Hell Baby, Panorama of Hell, and of course, his Hino horror series, Muneyuki Kaneshiro. While he may be most known for the success of the soccer manga, Blue Lock, these days, Muneyuki Kaneshiro made his debut writing the story for As the Gods Will in 2011, one of my personal favorite guilty pleasure manga. Outside of that, he's also had success with another seinen manga featuring many horror elements, that being Yagan. Do yourself a favor and check him out. Kaneko Inuki Known as the queen of horror manga, Kaneko Inuki found an interest in writing horror manga at a young age. She rose to popularity with the horror manga boom that was present in the 90s, which is when she began publishing. While any of her works are a good place to start, my recommendations would be with Presence or School Zone. Ochizuki Nori Ochizuki Nori began creating manga as a child and made his professional debut in 1984. Initially focusing on sci-fi manga, Ochizuki first ventured into the horror genre with The Horror Mansion. He is known for his depictions of splatter and gore, and for psychothriller narratives that portray the hidden madness lurking in the human psyche. The best places to start within his bibliography would be The Horror Mansion, Fear Infection, and Ankoku Jiten. HP Lovecraft Manga Adaptations Go Tanabe made a name for himself in the horror manga scene by adapting various HP Lovecraft works into manga. While he's done multiple at this point, my personal recommendation on where to start would be with At the Mountains of Madness, especially if you're new to HP Lovecraft as a whole. Leech Light Club For the sooty industrial towns lads, there's only one point of light, the Light Club, a secret brotherhood they've organized in an abandoned factory. They're on the verge of booting up their crowning achievement, a thinking machine. At the same time, the middle schooler's cootie-fearing solidarity is devolving into a downright national socialist muck of murderous paranoia, perverse aestheticism, and, not always, suppressed homosexuality. Sky High. All murdered souls arrive in limbo at the Gate of Grudges, where the gatekeeper, Izuko, presents them with a choice. They may pass through the gate into heaven, they may cling to life on earth and remain a ghost there forever, or they may haunt and kill one person in exchange for eternal damnation. As each spirit passes before the Izuko, she is bound to explain these options and impartially accept their decision. What will each choose? Peace? or spending an eternity in hell. Yokohama-sen Doppelganger Kenzaki Makoto, a debuting sculptor, was arrested as the serial killer of the Yokohama Line series of murders. He insisted that he was innocent, but was sentenced to the death penalty. He was executed 11 years after the crime, but when he reopened his eyes, by a twist of fate, he had returned to 11 years ago. 
25 days before the crime was committed, burning with the desire for revenge against the real murderer. Kenzaki begins to take action. The only one he can trust is himself. The crime suspense story of two selves fighting against fate unfolds. Mushihime, a dark romance story about a high school boy who falls helplessly in love with a beautiful girl who has to eat people to survive. Doomed Megalopolis, Tokyo, 1912. The imperial government begins to put in motion its plan to industrialize the capital so that it may take its place among the great cities of the modern world. The evil sorcerer Kato would rather see Tokyo in ruins, and plans to resurrect the spirit of the warrior Taro Masakado to destroy the city. To do this, he must possess the soul of a young girl with untapped supernatural powers. Yukari Tatsumiya. Various spiritual guardians try and fail to protect Yukari from his demonic powers, only for Kato's plan to be thwarted by the benign Masakado himself. Kato bides his time until he can use Yukari's daughter, Yukiko, to carry out the destruction on his own. But a new warrior appears to protect the Tatsumiya household, Keiko, an unamusing shrine maiden who wields the power of heaven itself. Sprite. One day, Yukiko, Kiriko, and Miki notice something strange. Black snow falling from the sky. Later on, on their way to a night of karaoke, the girls make a stop at the apartment of Yukiko's reclusive uncle to bring him groceries. And that's when their terror begins. For after a dark liquid devours the entire city below, Yukiko, her uncle, her friends, and a mysterious group of children will discover exactly what happened to the world as they know it. Kibin Gakuya, Yotsuwa Senpai no Kaiden. In the midst of a female kidnapping serial killer incident, Makoto's best friend Hinano has vanished completely. Desperate to find her before it's too late, Makoto will try anything, even invoking the resident phantom student of her middle school, Yotsuya Senpai. Surprisingly, Yotsuya Senpai appears to be an actual person. He's obsessed with creating the scariest stories ever using the people and situation in Makoto's middle school to stage them. Though Yotsuya is mostly just interested in making scary stories, Makoto finds that his stories tend to contain a kernel of truth and that they can reveal their terrible truth in the telling. But as Makoto helps Yotsuya stage his tales, can she convince him to tell the story of the whereabouts of her best friend? I am a hero. The zombie apocalypse has never been more surreal. A mentally unhinged manga artist witnesses the beginning of a zombie outbreak in Tokyo, and he's certain of only two things. He's destined to be the city's hero, and he possesses something very rare in Japan, an actual firearm. No longer human. Set in modern-day Tokyo, Dazai's tale details the life of a young man originally from a well-off family from Japan's far north. Yozo Oba is a troubled soul, incapable of revealing his true self to others. A weak constitution and the lingering trauma from some abuse administered by a relative forces him to uphold a facade of hollow jocularity since high school. Franken Fran. Franken Fran, creation of the absent professor Madaraki, has a true gift when it comes to the scalpel. She can give you the perfect body, bring the dead to life, or stitch people together so they will never again be apart. Join Fran and her boy-headed cat as they learn about the human soul while carving up the human flesh. But ethics aside, can something beautiful come out of such ugly work, or is it doomed to remain ugly until the end? On the other hand, does it matter? Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service recently died and have unfinished business, the Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service is your ticket to a worry-free eternal rest. Made up of spirit communicator Kuro, embalmer Keiko, leader Ao, body dowser Makoto, and Yuji, a boy who communicates with aliens through a hand puppet. The group handles everything from suicides to murders with ease. Whether you need a message delivered or want vengeance for your death, the Kurosagi Corpse Delivery Service can help you out for a price. And while the team often has to end up working on a volunteer basis, they'll still get the job done with a sarcastic smile. Barefoot Jen. The year is 1945, and the Japanese war effort is grinding to a halt. In Hiroshima, the Nakaoka family is working hard to survive in the midst of poverty and persecution. With his father constantly working, six-year-old Jen has been left in charge of his family, yet stays relentlessly optimistic in the face of hardship. Then, on August 6th, the atomic bomb Little Boy detonated in the center of town. 
and the people's lives were changed forever. As Jen struggles to cope with the horrific event, his youthful innocence and refusal to give up brings a renewed sense of hope to those around him. Kemono Zune In present-day Japan, Toshihiko Momota is a member of a secret warrior faction called the Kifuken. The Kifuken is dedicated to destroying Shoku Jinji, humans that turn into man-eating monsters when hunger takes them. However, to fate's chagrin, Momota meets and quickly falls for Yuka, a Shoku Jinji herself. Will their love be able to overcome Yuka's insatiable appetite for human flesh, or will the couple be destroyed by the bestial tendencies of humanity? Battle Royale Reality TV has hit a new and disturbingly graphic low with The Program, a television series in which a purposely chosen 9th grade class is forced to fight to the death on a remote island. With only minimal survival gear and a random weapon, each student must survive and kill their friends until only one winner remains. If the group refuses to play, all of its members are killed by the electronic collars around their necks. Girlfriends and boyfriends betray each other, friends are brutally slain by their closest companions, and alliances are made and broken. On screen for the world to see, only the strongest will survive this horrific, sadistic game. Mad K. When your kink involves eating a demon's guts, what else is there to do but summon a bewitching demon to feast on? Makoto summons a demon to grant his every twisted desire, and in exchange for getting to eat the demon's guts, Makoto will give him his life. Once Makoto has sated his demented appetites, he fulfills his end of the bargain, only to find he's been reborn as a monster in hell. Blam. Killy is a wanderer in a vast technological wasteland known as the Megastructure. His mission is to find a human with net terminal genes to prevent the collapse of the Netsphere, a virtual realm under control of the Authority. His long desolate journeys are punctuated by brutal encounters with silicone creatures bent on annihilating humanity, cyborgs intent on infiltrating the Netsphere, and the Builders, massive machines that mindlessly add to the chaos of the Megastructure. His only protection is an incredibly powerful gun known as the Gravitational Beam Emitter, which he never hesitates to unleash on his enemies. Will Killy be able to find net terminal genes amidst the scattered human tribes, or is the net sphere doomed to failure? Gift plus or minus. Life shouldn't be wasted. A high school student believes that criminals do no good for society. She works with a young entrepreneur in selling their organs to a back alley doctor who does transplantations on desperate patients. In hopes of saving the good and getting rid of the useless, they dwell with the past and serve justice through their unconventional business. Pupa. When Utsutsu and Yume were young, they were physically and emotionally abused by their sadistic father. And now that they're older, Utsutsu swears above all else that he'll protect his little sister at any cost. So when the girl is infected with the mysterious pupa virus, causing her to turn into a terrifying monster that eats anything around her, the boy does the only thing he can. He offers his sister his body and flesh to consume. He won't die, for Utsutsu was also infected with the virus, giving his body the superhuman ability to regenerate from any wound, and making himself the perfect food source for his beloved sibling. Though nefarious researchers and doctors are studying their every move, Utsutsu will do whatever he can to keep the pupa inside of his sister from emerging and killing them all. World Apartment Horror a bumbling Yakuza member is sent to rid an old and rotten apartment block of its foreign occupants, but finds it a lot harder than expected when he discovers an evil spirit still resides there. Ajin, Demi-Human The first Ajin appeared 17 years ago and quickly became the most important discovery to mankind. While they appear to be human, Ajin are rare, immortal beings that are feared by the populace. Only 46 are known to exist in the world, and most try to hide their existence, for capture means being subjected to brutal experiments that never end. Kei Nagai is a boy who dreams of becoming a doctor to heal his sister one day, but after he dies and revives in a car accident, he learns the terrifying truth that he too is an Ajin. Now, Kei finds himself on the run from both human and Ajin monsters that wish to do him harm, while struggling with his new, unwanted identity. Gringo 2061 July 28th, 2061 was an unlucky day for Raiji, in which he was falsely accused of being a groper on public transport. That evening, he joined his friends, Yuma and Osamu, to watch Haley's Comet. 
The comet appeared to have arrived a few hours ahead of schedule, but it didn't just pass by in the night sky. Instead, there was a blinding flash, and all the people Raiji and his friends had been watching with vanished. Not only that, but the area around them was suddenly filled with nightmarish giant mushrooms and twisted human faces. In this new, violent world, the three of them will encounter dangers human and inhuman. Yudeto. In the 1950s, an old woman was brutally murdered on the face of a clock tower by her adopted daughter. Two years later, the clock tower is known as the Ghost Tower, and it is supposedly haunted. Through an unusual series of events, a young neat man named Amano Taichi is attacked by someone or something in the same clock tower, and finds himself bound to the clock face to be killed in the same way as the old woman. Luckily for Amano, he doesn't meet the same fate. He's rescued by a mysterious person who claims that their name is Tetsuo, Bio Meat. In the not-so-distant future, the overpopulation and overfilling of landfills has led Japanese bioengineers to create Biomeat, known simply as BM, that eat trash, produce more of themselves, and can be killed for food. But when an earthquake frees some BM from their containment center, the situation rapidly spirals out of control, with BM eating everyone in sight. Four elementary school students flee the gruesome carnage found in their classroom and search for their parents and safety. Can Brash Maya, Quiet Kanomiya, Intelligent and Cold Shingo, and Always Eating Banba survive, let alone anyone? Denjin N. A psychological thriller centering on miserable convenience store worker Tadahiro, whose only solace is watching idle VR videos. He had to drop out of high school due to his unhappy family environment. His part-time employer treats him poorly, so he retreats into fantasies where the idol Kanzaki soothes all his sorrows. One day, Tadahiro gets into a fight with his heavily drunk mother, resulting in an accident that causes his body to undergo a bizarre transformation. Jinro Game One night, senior high school second year Nishina Adi is abducted. When she wakes, she is trapped in an uncanny, isolated space with other students from her high school, and forced to take part in the werewolf game. Thus, a death game filled with fear and terror that would pit werewolves and villagers against each other, force them to murder. A game with rules so absolute defiance is punished by gruesome death begins. Manhole a gruesome, disfigured, naked man climbs from beneath a manhole, and wanders the streets briefly before vomiting blood and falling down dead. Detectives Nao and Ken are sent to investigate the case. But what they uncover is far more horrifying than they could have possibly imagined. What could have been a simple parasitic infection could have widespread, deadly consequences. And it's up to the duo to discover the truth behind these events. Bokudano. When a group of children discover a strange cave at the beach, their lives are forever changed. Inside they meet a man called Kokopelli who seems to have a lot of advanced gadgetry. He invites them to participate in a game in which they play heroes saving Earth from 15 giant monsters. To defeat the invaders, he will give them a powerful mecha of black armor. The children eagerly sign the contract, name their new weapon Zerth, and must now take turns to pilot it. But the game is, in fact, all too real, and the consequences of battle become the stuff of nightmares. With no option to cancel the contract, is there any way to stop the game before it is too late for all of them? Dead Tube, Disturbing, thrilling videos in secret. A school game that puts life and death on the line. Hell Teacher Nube. Demons and monsters roam the halls of Domori Elementary, causing mayhem, mischief, and trouble for the students. To their rescue comes Nueno Mesuke, also known as Hell Teacher Nube. When he was a child, he sealed a demon in his left hand, giving him the extraordinary powers to defeat evil where it lies. Armed with his spirit-slaying abilities, Nube will protect his precious students at all costs. But more importantly, can he ever manage to get a date with the lovely Ritsuko-sensei? Yajin. Ghosts can't be seen or touched. We don't even know if they exist. Onda Iko is a middle school student who can see ghosts, and there's one haunting her room. The adventure story about boys, girls, and ghosts starts here. Sekayoni. With her parents dead or missing, Azuma has been taken into her uncle's family. However, her new family has been harshly abusing her, to the point she has become so mentally unstable she developed the rare syndrome of Alice in Mirrorland. 
which makes her see things that shouldn't be there reflected on mirrors, water, glass, etc. Everything begins when the things she sees start affecting the real world directly, and the barrier between reality and illusion breaks apart. Welcome to the world at the other side of the mirror. Welcome to Wonderland. A lollipop or a bullet? Nagisa Yamada is a bored teenager who finds everyday life extremely unappealing. Thus, she plans on joining a military school as soon as possible. A strange new student named Umino Mokuzu transfers into Nagisa's school and, much to our heroine's bewilderment, soon begins to follow her around incessantly. An annoyed and discomforted Nagisa strives to avoid any encounters with Mokuzu, but she soon begins to comprehend the pain and sadness concealed beneath this strange girl's cheerful and carefree demeanor. This man, Sono Kawo Mita Mono Niwa Shiwo. In present day Japan, Hakaru Amano, an investigator who works with facial composites, is asked by a mother and daughter to draw the face of a man who illegally trespassed on their premises. He comes up with the face of this man, Domu. Residents of a sprawling apartment complex are gripped by terror as dozens of tenants commit suicide over several months. The police are baffled. What no one realizes is that a malicious, psychic force has gained control over the complex. And it isn't until a young girl moves in with her family, a girl gifted with her own psychic arsenal, that the source of the chaos is finally revealed. Higanjima Akira is in the midst of the final battle between the human race and vampires. He only has 47 days until Japan is turned into an island of vampires. Emerging a bloated man with bloodshot eyes wanders to a crowded intersection in Tokyo, blankly staring into the distance before blood explodes from his eyes and his body, killing him on the spot and splashing many onlookers, including a student named Akadi. Who was this man, and what killed him? Discovering the mystery behind the body may prove to have deadly consequences not only for Dr. Onotama, but also all of Japan. Pygmalion at the National Local Mascot Festival, children all across Japan can meet their favorite local mascots. But as the festival gets underway, it becomes clear that what's inside these costumes aren't people. There's something much darker, with a taste for human flesh. Amid the chaos spreading through the entire country, Keigo Ayahara, his little brother Makoto, and their friend Akko must now fight for their survival and their humanity. Kaira. A girl suddenly finds herself in a room with an identical copy of herself. Writing on their foreheads identifies them as 328 and 329. Although there's water, there's no food, and all of the furniture is sized for an adult. A raft sits atop a freezing river, but it can only hold one of them. Meanwhile, a buzzing, huge insect tells a chilling tale. Only one of them can take the raft to the next world, and must kill the other to do so. Scumbag Loser High schooler Mashihiko Murai has exactly one thing going for him, a keen sense of smell. Not exactly the sort of defining trait that helps someone become one of the popular kids, especially given the Maladorous sense he finds particularly appealing, but that's okay. He set the bar pretty low in terms of his expectations. Just as long as he isn't the biggest loser, he can get by. As luck would have it, there's always been one rung lower on his class's social ladder. But when the biggest loser gets a girlfriend, a panicked Mashihiko pulls a name out of his past, Haruka Mizusawa. Naturally, everyone's skeptical, but when Haruka shows up at school the next day and backs up Mashihiko's story, their skepticism is quickly laid to rest. But what he failed to share with his classmates was that Haruka actually died years earlier. So who's turned up wearing her face? And why is she playing along with him at all? Mashihiko's about to learn that there are far more terrifying fates than being the biggest loser in school. Echo Echo Azarake. According to her fellow students, Misa is a star student and an idol of the classroom. However, she is also a young witch who goes from school to school using black magic in order to enact chaotic and brutal justice. Along the way, her strange past is revealed. In the Room Kipe Yuki is the number one ranked player in the MMORPG The Room, and he has the ego to prove it. Real life is boring, and he'd rather be the protagonist of a video game. But soon, Kipe's skills are put on the line when he, and a group of others, awaken in a prison cell. There are monsters nearby, and the environment seems eerily similar to The Room. How did they get here, and who will survive? Pumpkin Knight 
When Kazuya and his friends were in junior high, they bullied a girl named Naoko, culminating in a prank that severely disfigured her face. Now, years later, Naoko has escaped from a mental institution. Wearing a pumpkin mask, she'll stop at nothing until she finds and tortures those who made her life hell, gleefully killing anyone that stands in her way. Yamishibai, Japanese Ghost Stories. Step right up and gaze upon tales of horror and wonder, of urban legends and terrifying mysteries alike. Children. Tureyu Igarashi, a college student, took a six-month part-time job in a child care facility located deep within the mountains to take care of children for 3 million yen. However, in this remote area, sin runs deep in the work to be done. Fort of Apocalypse. Yoshiaki Maeda has been falsely accused and detained, along with delinquents from all over the Kanto region. In the juvenile correctional facility Shoran Institute, Yoshiaki is as typical as a boy can get, so when he finds himself living in this violence-ridden prison, he can't think of anything worse. His cellmates, Iwakura, Yamai, and Yoshioka are a cunning crew, and soon Yoshiaki finds himself pulled into a feud going on in the prison. Then suddenly, a prison van crashes into the facility, and what shambles out of the wreckage are flesh-eating zombies. And so, the curtain is raised on this bone-chilling story of panic and horror. Hideo Yamamoto Working as an assistant for the popular seinen mangaka, Kenshi Hirokane, Hideo Yamamoto developed his craft at an early age, before everything changed after receiving the Tetsuya Chiba Award in 1998 at the ripe age of 20. Soon after, he would make his first official debut with Sheep, before going on to create some of the most violent, depraved, and strangely thought-provoking manga in the industry. While not explicitly horror, it's no exaggeration to say the intense themes present in his most popular works are nothing short of horrifying. The best places to start within his bibliography would be Homunculus or Ichi the Killer. Suehiru Maruo Suehiru Maruo officially debuted in 1980, but before that, he made a submission to Weekly Shonen Jump, and was rejected because his work was too graphic. Since then, he has gained quite the cult following in the more graphic horror manga scene, as his style is mainly described as erotic grotesque, featuring a wide number of taboo subjects. To get introduced to his work, some good places to start would be Mr. Arashi's Amazing Freak Show, Ultra Gash Inferno, or The Strange Tale of Panorama Island. Masaki Nakayama while not much is known about his personal life, Masaki Nakayama is one of the most underrated horror mangaka to date, being most well known for PTSD Radio and Fuan no Tane. His works are without a doubt some of the most creepy and unsettling stories you'll experience in the genre. Shintaro Kago one of the most infamous mangaka in the horror community, Shintaro Kago debuted his unique style of horror manga in 1988 and has since gained a cult following. Known for his demented and horrific depictions of Guro specifically, Shintaro's works are not for the faint of heart. And frankly, some of his works are the single most disturbing pieces of media I've ever read. To get introduced to his style at the tamer level, I'd recommend checking out Dementia 21. And if you're interested in that, you can fall down the rabbit hole from there. Dark Hideout. It is a very dark night. Under a heavy rain, a determined man sets out to track his terrified victim. The decision of Kirishima Seichi is clear. Tonight, he will kill his wife. A year ago, he was a happy man, a successful writer, a contented husband, and the father of a young boy. At the time, everything seemed to be going well for him, but such happiness had to end. The day his editor put an end to their collaboration, darkness seeped into his life faster than a bullet. A terrifying descent into hell commences, page by page of what seems to be his last novel. Goth. Itsuki Kamiyama is a young man in high school who is morbidly obsessed with murders and death. He even combs through the paper for new information about killings. One day when he notices his classmate Yoru and the scars on her pale wrist, he sees that she too shares his interest in death. Together, the two of them manage to solve a string of murders. Not for any sense of justice, but rather out of curiosity. Yet, when does it get to be too much? and what happens when Itsuki stumbles upon a dark secret from Yoru's past. Himizu. Sumida wants the status quo to remain in every way, 
live a normal life, get a normal job, have normal kids, never to be anyone fortunate or unfortunate, content in normality. Anyone who doesn't agree is foolish, doomed to live their life scraping up a mountain that they can never conquer, fated to die in despair, wishing things had been better. When his mother kicks his father out of the house and onto the streets, he thinks he'll be fine. When his mother leaves him to live with her boyfriend, he makes the best of it. When he realizes that he's no longer average, he strives to make his life worthwhile the only way he knows how. Shigahime A boy named Osamu Hirota unwillingly loses his ability to live a normal life, thanks to an immortal vampire woman and her former lackey, Suichi. Cursed with the form of a monster and the need to hunt for blood to sustain a human form, how will Osamu cope with his new life? Napia, a boy infatuated with his school's doctor, follows him home one day and finds out that the doctor has been keeping a pet in his bed. Who is the boy being kept? But more importantly, why does he look so much like the protagonist? Brad Hurley no Basha, Every year, teenaged orphans dream that they might be one of the lucky girls adopted by Lord Nicola A. Bradhurley. The honor means a place in the household as well as a spot in the famous Bradhurley Opera Troupe. And many, such as Diana, Ruby, and others wish nothing more than to be chosen. However, what the girls don't know is that being picked means traveling to a brutal, horrifying fate that is worse than death. Starving Anonymous it's a day like any other, and high school students Ie and Kazu are on the bus home from school when, suddenly, it floods with a mysterious gas. The pair pass out and wake up to find themselves aboard a truck packed full of human bodies. They're surrounded by rows of frozen corpses, and a staff of living human beings sawing them into pieces. Where are they, and how can they escape from this nightmare? Kangoku Jiken Enyama Aito is a depressed high school student who is the victim of bullying every day. He receives a letter on the last day of school before summer vacation, inviting him to a confinement game, where he can name any person who will then be confined for a month. Aside from murder, Enyama is allowed to do anything to that person, with the promise of a money reward at the end. For his target, Enyama picks Aya Kirishima, the ringleader of the pack that bullies him. Kibo no Shima. A group of teenage boys travel to an island where it is rumored that only women live. They are all eager to lose their virginity, but will the legend surrounding the island be true, or is something more sinister happening there? Hime no Espia. Abused like a slave by everyone at school, and battered by the single mother she lives with at home. That was the girls, Endo's Himeno's, everyday life. However, one day, a wasp that stung the girl changed her fate. Her fate and that of humanity. Euphoria. In this anime series, which is an adaptation of the not safer work game of the same title, the protagonist, Takato Kieske, and six others are locked up in a white room. Then they are asked to play a weird game by a mysterious voice. One of the girls, named Miyako, refuses to do so. At that moment, the lights go off, and when they turn back on, she is chained to a torture set and is given electric shocks. Everyone is horrified, but Kieske starts getting aroused. This is his secret his desire to assault and humiliate girls, and the show has only just begun. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that you probably shouldn't watch that one. Ijosha no Ai, the demon in human form, an innocent girl sacrificed. Kazumi Ichinose, 16 years old, high school student. Mido Saiki fell in love with him when he was an elementary school student. That was the beginning of hell. Jealousy, obsession, pools of blood, tears, Death. Common sense. Words. Nothing makes sense. Misfortune befell those loved by him. Love starts with blood. This is the beginning. Mai-chan's daily life. A young maid, referred to as Mai-chan, happens to be immortal, and her mistress forces her to do so many messed up things I'm not even going to elaborate further. Proceed at your own risk. This one is honestly really disturbing. Kami no Kodomo the twisted and deeply disturbing tale of a sociopathic serial killer. Umaredu Kaichi. At age 33, I am a loser, jobless and a virgin, who only has remorse and pity for myself. Called by Anna, my secret crush in my childhood, and her fiancé, I come to face the reality. But after I fall from the roof, I find myself to be back in the past. 
Now I will get my life back. Trash. The mafia boss of the Iwashi family is a high school girl named Konomi Minoko, but don't let her appearance fool you. She has done and seen things that normal citizens can't even imagine. Under her control are two assassins who have gained legendary status for their deadliness and ability to get the job done. Ishikawa Rushia, codenamed Barrette, uses a modified handgun that uses a custom-made hollow-point bullet that explodes the target from the inside. Shintaro Maden, codenamed Francesca, uses a original weapon that is a mix between a throwing axe and battle axe. Both of them are Minoko's high school classmates and seem like normal teenagers, but are actually two of the most feared killers in the mob world who handle missions often involving other assassins and underground groups. 17 Sai. High school boys Hidoki and his friend Takashi are rescued from bullying by a notorious gangster, Miyamoto. At first, they are thrilled to be under his protection, and cheerfully run off anyone who threatens them with the mere mention of Miyamoto's name. Soon, they learn there is a lot more to being in Miyamoto's gang than just being protected. In return, they're expected to offer loyalty and obedience, or face possibly deadly consequences. This becomes harder as the violence and the crimes they find themselves committing begins to escalate. One night, they kidnap a high school girl, Sachiko. Now, Hidoki has two battles to face. Internally, he faces the dissonance between his sense of self-preservation and his conscience. Externally, Sachiko's twin sister Miki, who goes to Hidoki's high school, her parents and the police are searching for the missing girl. Will Sachiko ever return home? What kind of person, or monster, will Hidoki become? Misu Miso. Nozaki Haruka's family moves to a small town following her father's new job. Unfortunately, Haruka becomes a target of bullying in the new school, which is set to close in a few months due to the lack of students. As a strong girl who doesn't want to worry her parent, Haruka tries to ignore the bullies, but the case is steadily growing out of proportion. And since the teachers are not willing to deal with bullying during the final school months, nothing is stopping an appalling tragedy that is looming over Haruka. Kichi Kujima. Takahisa and a group of students in a university club head to the remote Kichiku Island in search of ruins, but they're immediately attacked by a large man in a pig mask, and their boat sinks, leaving them stranded. The group quickly discovers that the island is inhabited by bloodthirsty cannibals, but there's more going on at Kichiku Island than meets the eye. Dokumushi. A group of very different people wake up together in the sealed environment of an abandoned school building. They include the college students Yumi and Reiji, a cabaret girl named Akane, an occult-obsessed salaryman named Yuki Toshi, a punk factory worker named Toshio, an unemployed p-word that likes children named Taichi, and a nine-year-old girl named Michika. The building in which they find themselves has running water, no food, and a timer set for seven days. When they find a cleaver and a hot pot in an upstairs classroom, they begin to guess the intention behind their imprisonment. They're meant to kill and eat one another to survive. In principle, they should be able to survive just by waiting out the seven days in hunger, but nothing is ever that simple. I was originally going to stop at five tiers, but I felt one more tier needed to be created specifically for the most unknown horror manga of all time, which are the various horror manga that were published by the Hibari Shobo Publishing Company. Hibari Shobo was active from the 1950s to the early 2000s, but have since closed their doors completely. Within that time frame, specifically from the 1950s to the 1980s, the company would publish numerous bizarre, unknown horror manga, along with releasing what would become the first horror manga anthology series, Kaidan, otherwise known as Ghost Stories. In total, they easily published over 500 different horror manga, also helping multiple popular horror mangaka like Kazuo Umezu and Hideshi Hino get their start. The only issue is that so many of these stories were only published in limited quantities, and the vast majority have become big collector's items for their scarcity. Through such limited releases, a couple of these stories have also no doubt been lost completely, never to be seen or read again. So while Hibari Shoba was crucial to creating the horror manga we now know and love, it also helped publish numerous that you, or anyone for that matter, will never be able to read, making it the deepest part of this iceberg, and concluding our look into everything horror anime and manga has to offer. 
I know this video was more or less just a massive catalog for the genre, but hopefully through this you found at least a couple new series that might interest you, and found a better appreciation for this subgenre of anime and manga that goes largely undiscussed in the greater parts of the community. So make sure to drop a like if you enjoyed, and hit that subscribe button with notifications on so you don't miss the next video. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at 2SpookyTube, follow me on Twitch at 2Spookster, and once again make sure to pick up the 2 Spooky Christmas sweater for 2021 before it is gone forever in March. Links to all that will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon with the next video. And I regret every